In basketball, over any other skill set in the game, getting a bucket will always reign supreme. Now, we all know who the all-time leader in points is, but more importantly, and never really discussed, is points generated. An overall total of the number of points a player has created through both scoring and assists. The leaderboard for a statistic like this will only feature the most productive and impactful players to ever play the game. Well, here is a chart of players who have generated the most points in NBA history. At the bottom, you have some all-time great players. Harden, Westbrook, the point god himself, Chris Paul. As you go up the list, you won't see any more active players, just legends of the game. MJ, Kobe, Kareem, and all the way at the top, you have John Stockton. Which should hardly come as a surprise since Stockton scored nearly 20,000 points in his career and has by far the most assists in league history. Wait, we're missing just one player. There he is. With 56,682 points generated so far in his career, LeBron James already has by far the most points generated of any player in NBA history. Even crazier, he's still got plenty of basketball ahead of him. Today, I've got some NBA facts that may just blow your mind. We've done quite a few of these in the past, maybe four or five. I don't really know. I've done a lot of these videos and I'm losing track at this point. But with that subpar intro out of the way, let's get into this. This past week, the Oklahoma City Thunder had a starting five with an average age of just 20 years and 219 days old. The very next day, the Oklahoma Sooners, a college team in the same state as the Thunder, had a starting five of 21 years and 313 days old. Sounds impossible, but it's true. And it's blowing my mind. On a similarly odd note, last season on February 6, 2020, the Rockets played the Lakers in LA and had a starting five with an average height of six feet four and a half inches. On that same exact night, at the same exact time, in the same city, the high school basketball team Modern Day had a starting five with an average height of six foot seven inches, two and a half inches taller than the average height of the Rocket starters. What's even more strange is that the average height for a player on Modern Day's entire roster was still taller than the average player on the Houston Rockets' entire roster. And once again, my mind is about to explode trying to process this information. Russell Westbrook has redefined the triple-double, a stat line that was once a rarity but has now become a common occurrence. In fact, just this week, Russell Westbrook broke the all-time Washington Wizards franchise record for triple-doubles in just 38 games possibly the quickest a player has ever broken a franchise record. In these 38 games, Westbrook racked up 16 triple doubles, which means in 38 games, Westbrook notched more triple doubles than all of these players had in their entire career. Has your mind been blown yet? Let's move on. Sean Livingston, a former point guard in the NBA for those unfamiliar, played in 959 games and took 5,072 shots in his 14 seasons in the NBA, and only made 15 three-pointers in his entire career. 15. In fact, Livingston was a longtime teammate of Stephen Curry, who in 2017 hit a combined 23 pointers in back to back games, which means that Sean Livingston made less threes in his entire 14 year career than Steph made in a 40 minute span. When Wilt Chamberlain was playing in the NBA, the league did not keep track of blocked shots. It wasn't until the season after Wilt retired when the NBA finally began to officially record the stat. But through some extensive research a few years ago, Reddit users were able to collect data from 112 games where Wilt's block shots were recorded. Now, these games only represent about 9% of his career. But with this sample size of games, it was discovered that Wilt averaged about 8.8 .8 blocks per game for his entire career. And since Wilt Chamberlain played 1,205 games throughout his career, we can make a rough estimate of just how many shots Wilt blocked. A total so staggering that no player since Wilt has even come remotely close. In fact, with a rough estimate of 10,600 career block shots, Wilt has nearly three times as many block shots as the next highest player, Hakeem. And your list of unbelievable Wilt Chamberlain records just got longer. Oddly enough, possibly the most impressive defensive player in league history was Wilt's longtime rival, Bill Russell, 
But when you think of the best defensive player to ever lace up, most think of Scottie Pippen, Kawhi, maybe Ben Wallace, or Hakeem. But the answer to this question is not nearly as subjective as you may think. The answer is Bill Russell, and it's not even close. In fact, Russell has the NBA record for most defensive win shares in a season. Oh, and he also has the second most defensive win shares in a single season. And the third, and fourth, and fifth, sixth, ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. Russell is known for his rings, but his individual greatness has been underappreciated over the years. For perspective, in Wilt Chamberlain's illustrious career, he was the best scorer for seven seasons. In Bill Russell's career, he was the best defensive player in the league for 11 seasons. In other words, Bill Russell was better at defense than Wilt Chamberlain was at scoring. Just let that sink in. Every NBA fan knows the long and successful history of both the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics. These two organizations winning nearly half of all NBA championships since the NBA was created. But what most people don't know is that only two of the 17 top final scorers of all time did not play for the Lakers or Celtics. You may have heard of these two players, Michael Jordan and Stephen Curry. At this point, most fans know Steve Kerr as the coach of the Golden State Warriors. Other fans may know him as the sharpshooter from the Bulls' three championships in the 90s, but not many people know that Steve went to five finals and won all five. Five for five on the biggest stage. In those five finals appearances, Kerr only scored 96 points. That's a ring for every 19 points scored in the finals. For comparison, Michael Jordan won a ring for every 196 points he scored in the finals. Kobe won a ring for every 187 points he scored in the finals. And LeBron has won a ring for every 390 points he scored in the finals. Steve Kerr, GOAT status confirmed. Lately, the NBA has seen some all-time great games, and oftentimes these games occur on the same night, making for all-time historical days of NBA action. But quite possibly the most incredible regular season night in NBA history occurred on December 8th, 1961, when a 27-year-old Elgin Baylor put up an almost incomprehensible stat line against the Philadelphia Warriors. 63 points, 31 rebounds, and 7 assists. To this day, one of the greatest performances in NBA history. And the Lakers needed every ounce of production they got out of Baylor that night to narrowly edge out the Warriors, because Will Chamberlain Drop 78 and 43 on the same exact night. 78 points and 43 rebounds. In a single game, these two legends combined for 141 points and 74 rebounds. And if there's anything I'm absolutely certain of, it's that there will never be another NBA game quite like this one. Now, some NBA fans may know of a stat called MVP shares, which is basically a number that represents how many MVP votes a player received over his career in relation to winning the award each season. For example, if a player didn't receive any MVP votes in a season, he would get zero MVP shares that season. If a player wins the award and receives 80% of the first place votes, he would get 0.8 MVP shares. Now, this stat is interesting, because as I just laid out, you don't even need a full MVP share to actually win the MVP. For example, Derrick Rose has 0.98 MVP shares, but has an MVP award in his trophy case. On the other end of the spectrum, you have guys who have piled up multiple top 5 MVP finishes but have never won the award. Like Chris Paul, who has 1.66 MVP shares but has no MVP to show for it. Shaq and Kobe both have more than 4 MVP shares for their entire career but have just one regular season MVP each. But what's really interesting is that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has the most regular season MVPs in league history with six, despite having far less MVP shares than both LeBron and Michael Jordan. Basically, every time Kareem could have won the award, he did. Whereas players like Michael, Kobe, LeBron, and Shaq possibly got robbed of at least one regular season MVP award. On another note, here's a graph of the top active NBA players when it comes to MVP shares. And here's LeBron. Oh. Wait, sorry. Here's LeBron. Jerry West has scored 40 points or more in the finals 10 times, which doesn't sound like a lot at first, until you realize that's more 40-point finals performances than Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan combined. But the logo's greatness doesn't end there. Jerry West also has the most 30-point games in finals history. Oh, and he also has the most 20-point games in finals history as well. 
Luka Doncic is already 11th all-time in triple doubles in NBA history despite playing just a little over two seasons worth of games in his career. In fact, throughout his career so far, Luka tallies up a triple double one in every five games, a triple double rate far exceeding any other player in NBA history. Coming into the NBA, Zion Williamson was the most hyped prospect since LeBron James. However, that hype has quickly died down in just his second season in the NBA despite Zion's incredible play so far. In fact, out of all active players, the quickest to reach 1,200 career points isn't LeBron, it isn't Kevin Durant or Damian Lillard or Luka Doncic, it's Zion Williamson. So far, Zion has been everything we expected, and yet somehow he went from overrated to underrated in just two seasons. Oh, and if anyone was wondering which player reached 1,200 points faster than anyone else in NBA history, surprise, it's Wilt Chamberlain. By a lot. But if Zion and Wilt are two of the fastest to accomplish this feat, who is the slowest? Well, from October of 1983, to February of 1991, over the course of seven and a half years, a player by the name of Greg Kite eventually reached a career point total of 1,205. This took him 473 games to accomplish. Good job, Greg.